weeks ago, I got my hands on my first ever Fujifilm camera, the X-Pro3. When I started film photography many years ago, the cameras were super cheap along with the film, so shooting film was something that was just fun for me and a little side project to do alongside my digital photography. But like many people, I fell in love with film and I fell in love with the look and the grain and the tones that naturally come with film and I shot it a lot more and over the couple of years, film cameras have skyrocketed along with film prices. I still shoot primarily film and tons of film throughout the year, but many people are always asking me what is the best beginner camera to start with. And this question isn't looking for a digital DSLR, it is coming from people who are more interested in picking up their first point and shoot or film camera. So throughout the year it has just been more and more difficult for me to recommend a film camera to someone because it's just too much of a risk for someone who's never done photography because spending so much money on a camera and on film just to get a blank roll or not many shots to come out is something that throws people away from photography which is something I definitely do not want to see. So throughout the course of this year it has been my goal to find a camera that I can recommend to beginners and professionals to help them achieve the film look. At first I thought of recommending point and shoots because they're cheap and easy to use, but that doesn't have a lot of scalability, there's no interchangeable lenses, and it's not something that professionals are looking for. And then I thought of recommended high-end digital cameras like the Canon mirrorless cameras, but those are too technically perfect and mostly out of people's price ranges. So I finally settled on getting my first Fujifilm camera because I realized that these cameras are meant to look like film cameras, feel like film cameras, and they even come with film simulations to emulate the look of film. And I have to say I was super skeptical about this and with the rise in prices of Fujifilm cameras, I couldn't tell if it was just hype or if these cameras really had some true potential to them. So at first I scoured the internet for an X100V which was sold out and I definitely did not want to pay the resale prices for them. But throughout messages and talking to some great creators, I came across Ryan Leone, who's an amazing guy who works at b &H, and he was able to get me a Fuji X-Pro3 for me to test out and find out if Fuji cameras are the real deal. So before we continue any further in this video, I just want to say thank you to B&H and Fujifilm for letting me test out this X-Pro3 with a 23mm f2 lens. So they are both partnering up with me in this video, but all of these thoughts on film simulations and Fujifilm cameras are my own. They're not reviewing this video or anything, I'm just putting it out there on my honest thoughts. So when it comes to the Fujifilm X-Pro3, the first thing that I was interested in is that this camera is meant for you not to look at the back LCD, and it's also meant for you not to use their electronic viewfinder. There's a way for you to switch out of the electronic viewfinder and just use the optical viewfinder. And if you flip the back screen of this camera up, all it does is shows you the film simulation that you're using, and there's no back screen for you to naturally look at. This makes it an honest experience and honestly did make me feel like I was shooting film. This camera honestly looks very similar to my Leica M6 which is my favorite film camera. It's also a rangefinder, and these experiences are both very same and they're also the same weight and size. So this camera is very welcome to my collection because I love the aesthetic of it and I love that it is almost a seamless workflow from my film camera to this digital camera. So the look and feel of this camera definitely feels like a film camera, but then I was wondering if these film simulations were actually accurate and actually can render the look of film without having to do any post-processing. So luckily when I got my hands on this camera, the New Jersey State Fair had just rolled into town and I went there with my brother to record some footage and also shoot the Fujifilm camera to test out my first film simulation which was the Kodak Portra 400 simulation by Fuji X Weekly.
So when I first got these results back, I was absolutely blown away by the JPEG files that were able to come out of this camera. They actually look very similar to Kodak Portrait 400, which is very welcome because right now a roll of Portrait 400 is nearing $20, and I definitely don't want to spend $20 for 36 shots. That being said, it did take me a little bit of time to break out of habits with digital cameras. At first, when I was using the X-Pro3, I was taking multiple shots, but I did find out that if you put a 1GB SD card into the Fujifilm X-Pro3, you can get about 36 raw shots on the SD card, which is about the same as shooting a roll of film, which is definitely something I want to try in the future to kind of more emulate that film effect, although it might be a little bit of a gimmick to some people. I really think that the film simulations would definitely excel having that one gigabyte card because then to me it would definitely feel like shooting a roll of film and I think I'd be a little more intentional with my shots whereas when I went out to the state fair I was kind of shooting a lot of shots and just kind of using it like a digital camera which didn't really take me out of the experience but it was kind of a lot to go through which is something I don't like in my digital workflow. I like that when I shoot film I don't have a lot of shots to go through and it's a lot easier to go through my images and pick out my favorites from the day. One thing I also really liked about the film simulations is that you can quickly switch them out on the fly. If you shoot a film simulation and realize that it's not going well with your scene, whether it be some of the white balance settings or something else, you can quickly go into the back camera and you can pick a different film simulation. You can choose black and white, you can choose a different color profile, or you can input a completely different film simulation and shoot the camera completely differently. There's truly an infinite amount of film simulations that you can get with this camera. And there's a huge catalog made by other people such as Fuji X Weekly, which was very nice because I was able to try out some of my other favorite film stocks like Ektar 100 and Gold 200, which was definitely fun in this camera because this is a Fuji camera, so it's emulating a lot of the Fuji films. But getting those Kodak films inside of this camera was amazing because I primarily shoot with Kodak films because I love the colors. I think it's kind of funny that the Fujifilm digital cameras are doing so well because when I think about the film world, a lot of the Fujifilm stocks are disappearing and it's kind of making me wonder what is going on with Fuji, but then you realize they're putting a lot of time and effort into making these digital cameras that emulate their film instead of creating more film, which is definitely better in some ways, such as environmental waste that can come with film. So after the sun dipped below the horizon, I decided to switch to a different film simulation, which was the Classic Chrome, which is just a default film simulation inside of the camera because I wanted to see how this would handle a normal film simulation as well as low light. After seeing how the scenes were rendered with classic chrome, I was very happy with the night shots. I thought they were very sharp. There were some that had a little bit of motion blur, which was definitely user error because I was running around very fast taking quick snapshots. But the shots that I took and stood still and really composed and focused, I was able to get extremely sharp shots at night and the colors are beautiful. So the Fujifilm camera performed very well during the day as well as during the night which is something that is extremely good to see because this camera is a couple of years old now. When it comes to viewing this camera as a digital camera, I think it just excels very well. The menu system is very nice as well as there being a very nice tactile joystick which helps you choose your focus points and navigate through the menus, which means this camera is very small and concise with its buttons 
and it makes it very enjoyable to shoot digital if you want to shoot primarily digital with a little bit of that film experience. And viewing this camera as a film camera, like I said before, it's very nice. The ergonomics are very similar to a rangefinder film camera. You get that optical view and you also get those film simulations on the back, which is just an excellent shooting experience coming from film myself. So after shooting with the X-Pro3 for multiple shoots, I can honestly say that this is a camera that will always be in my kit, at least until the X-Pro4 comes out, because I truly enjoyed using the film simulations on this camera. There's some kind of joy with customizing the settings on your camera and getting a different image to come out. When I'm shooting with a Canon camera, they're always having the same raw profile that you see through the back screen so you never really get too excited although you know you're getting a very technically sharp and good image the fujifilm camera might not be the sharpest it might not have the best dynamic range but it is the camera that makes me creative it is the camera that is going to make me go out and document my life and document my friends and that is what i truly look for in my camera is something that i want to pick up and something i could just throw in my bag and use and also give to my friends and have them enjoy using the experience as well so once again I just want to thank Fujifilm and B&H for letting me use this camera. My first Fujifilm experience was just great and I definitely understand the hype. I do not think that these cameras are just a gimmick or a fad. I think these cameras are really here to stay and I think Fujifilm is investing a lot of time and effort into making these cameras the best that they can, which is very welcome to see because with film being hard to get and recommending a film camera being hard for me, I can honestly recommend any of the Fujifilm cameras such as the X-Pro3, X-T4, or X100V. If you can get your hand on any one of these cameras and use the film simulations or even the old models of these cameras, you're going to have a blast because these cameras are totally capable and they give you completely different looks every time you shoot them if you put in different simulations. So that being said, if you're looking to pick up any Fujifilm camera, check out B&H's links that I'm going to link down below. They're a great camera store. They're right here local to me in New York. And there's tons of events that they also have. So if you guys are interested in coming out to any events also, there's tons of stuff that they're going to be releasing on their news and website. So check it out and you might see me at some events. But that being said, let me know if you use a Fujifilm camera. I absolutely love the one that I have now and I will continue using it for as long as I can. I'll catch you guys in the next one with some more photography videos. Peace.